Hey y'all, I'm Lego Rob and I hope you're all doing great. So in this video we're taking a look at set number 10278 and it is the Lego Modular Police Station. So this set retails for 300 Aussie dollary dues and it contains 2,923 pieces. So let's take a quick look at the box first. So this set is part of the LEGO Creator Expert series, which was a 16 plus set, but now has changed to the 18 plus collection and is now called the Modular Building Collection. The front of the box looks awesome, as most of the 18 plus sets do, with the old black box with the main build popping out at you and somehow making you buy it even though you never had an interest in modular buildings before. <laughs> oh wait, that's just me. On top of the box we see all the minifigs included and there are five in total. We can also see the dimensions of the set and it is 25 centimeters or 10 inches wide and 37 or 14.5 inches tall. We can also see some of the interactive parts of the set and some of the internals of the building as well as how it can be connected to other modular buildings. So now I'll crack it open, assemble it and come back and give you my thoughts on it. Here is the finished set and all I can say is that I'm very impressed with how it turned out. This being my first modular build ever, I had a lot of fun with it and was introduced to a lot of building techniques, which was a joy, therefore I wanted to keep building and not stop. But all in all, the set took me about 7 hours to assemble over 2 nights and I thoroughly enjoyed every minute of it. So first of all, let's take a quick look at the minifigs and then we'll have a gander at the main build. The minifigs included are the younger police officer with the awesome looking dark blue uniform and the gold accents on the torso and cap. Then we have the robber wearing his red jacket and flat cap and he's also sporting a satchel. Then we have the older police chief with his moustache and stubble wearing the same uniform as the younger police officer. Next up we have the donut shop lady with her colourful top. And finally, we get the lady police officer with a slightly different uniform from the men and she does not have a hat as she sports long hair. Now taking a look at the main build, I really do like how it looks and is very reminiscent of the old New York police station from the 50s, with its grand entrance and pillar supported facade. I also really like the colour choice with the sand coloured brick and grey roofline 
and the dark blue accents for the awnings. I also really like this purple and white colour scheme for the donut shop and a sand green for the other side of the police station. Which kind of breaks it up and makes it look like there are three buildings rather than two. Well technically there are three if you can call this tiny little newspaper stand a building. As technically everything in the green part of this building is still part of the police station except this dark green newspaper stand at the front which is its own separate tiny building. So starting in the donut shop interior, I have to admit I really like this little shop fit out. Yes, it's very small but very colourful and cheerful. With a tiled floor that matches the walls to the assortment of baked goods on the back wall. We even have a coffee maker tucked away in the left corner. Now moving upstairs, we have the donut shop owner's living quarters with a bed, a record player and a tiny kitchen. However, we do not have any stairs going up to that level. We only have an external ladder that allows entry to this space. So this poor woman has to climb up and down a ladder every day in order to come and go to her apartment. Imagine having to carry all your groceries up a ladder. Now the ground floor of the police station is basically the main reception area with the front desk and an old telephone. Also we have a water cooler on the left and a tiny prison cell to the right. I really do like how this whole door pops out and reveals the secret tunnel the thief has dug with nothing but a spoon, which allows him to escape and steal more donuts. Behind the front desk we have more stairs which lead to the back door, which I think is a nice touch. It gives this set a more complete aesthetic. The second set of stairs on the left lead to the second level and on the second floor we basically get two desks with chairs which I guess is where the police officers do their investigations. On one of the desks we get a typewriter and on the second desk we have another old telephone. Also on the right side we have a clue wall which I guess is where the police are connecting their clues in order to catch the thief. The little red rubber band is a nice touch to depict the traditionally used red string. And finally, in a corner we get a camera and a backdrop for where mugshots are taken. And moving to the third floor, we have an interrogation room with an old style tape recorder and for some strange reason, a toilet. But surprisingly, they didn't include a sink in it, so I guess many figs don't wash their hands after taking a dump. And finally, we get the evidence room, which can be accessed via this door. But also this roof comes off, so you can actually see what's inside there, being stored as evidence. I think that's a nice little touch. Makes the police station one whole cohesive building. Like it's all there, where the person interacting with it is not asking himself, Where is this? Why wasn't this included? Just little things like this tells me that they planned this set very well, knew what they wanted to get out of it and delivered on it. Now moving on to the roof, we don't get much detail up there apart from this water tank and the communication antenna. There is quite a bit of space up there so I guess you could fill it with whatever you like. I'm sure those people with Lego cities will fill that space with some crazy creations. And finally, we come to the newspaper stand. This thing is very tiny, it has just enough room for one minifig and a couple of donuts stashed in the corner. So all in all, this set looks great and the details through the roof. But then again, it has to, as this set probably has the most interesting story. And that is that the donut thief, even though he is in jail, still manages to escape at night through his tunnel that he's dug and climbs up to the donut owner's apartment where he has cut a hole under her bed, which lines up perfectly with the donut shelf below. And he manages to steal donuts using his fishing rod without the police ever finding out. That is why they think that the donut thief is still at large. So I think that is a pretty cool story and a very humorous one at that. To sum it up, I'm a huge fan of this build. It looks fantastic with all the details crammed into it, from the flowers all around this set to this wicked looking green vine down the side. To the little bird on the windowsill which happened to also steal a donut. Also this giant billboard on the side is fantastic as well. 
it just gives it that little extra pop of colour. Oh yeah, and it's printed. Not a pesky sticker that I hate so much. So all in all, I'm really glad I got this set and that this was my introduction to the modular series because now I'm really keen to start collecting the previous modular buildings as I think they would look great all connected together. Well, at least the ones I can afford anyway. What do you guys think my next modular building should be? Leave your recommendations down in the comments below. So to sum it all up, I highly recommend this set to anyone who loves doing that one-off build and not really interested in other modular buildings as I think it's pretty great standout building and makes for a great showpiece. But I do have to give a warning, you might just get hooked on modulars like I am now. I hope you enjoyed the video, if you did please consider subscribing and give it a thumbs up and I'll catch you next time, bye!